This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1122 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of helpful hints, useful facts, and practical techniques for horse folks. Brought to you today by Kentucky Performance Products. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today, I am joined by Michelle Barr, British Horse Society Certified Instructor and a Certified Judge and Instructor for the World Side Saddle Federation. We thought we'd go way outside the box today and talk about hot weather riding tips. And we'll get right to it after this from Kentucky Performance Products. How is Summer Games different from other electrolyte products? Summer Games Plus contains the same electrolyte formulation as Summer Games Electrolyte, which was originally formulated for the horses competing at the 1996 Olympics. The formulation was based on the results of research conducted in anticipation of the Games, which were held in Atlanta, Georgia, known for its hot, humid summers. Summer Games mimics the composition of equine sweat, supplying the horse with the exact amounts and ratios of electrolytes relinquished in sweat. Summer Games Plus contains no sugar, like many popular commercial electrolyte supplements. Summer Games Plus also contains a buffering agent that helps create a soothing gastric environment. This is especially important for horses subjected to the stresses often related to top performance, such as exertion, transportation, and unfamiliar stabling atmospheres. Ask for Summer Games and Summer Games Plus electrolytes at your local tack and feed supplier or visit kppusa.com. Now, on with today's tip. And welcome back to the show, Michelle Barr from Rightly Equestrian Center in Louisiana. Thanks thanks Hi. for stopping by. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. We're going to do some extemporaneous tips today, Michelle and I, because Michelle always has these really, really clever and thoughtful and creative tips for me when I talk to her on the phone. And she writes them down because that's because she's really clever. And she lost her notes. So today is going to be extemporaneous tips. Yes. <laughs> I think we'll be good, though. I think you'll be good. I think you'll be just we'll fine. We'll be good. Yes. We you're both sm- live where it's hot, so we can handle this. Well, that's true. You live these tips every day because today it's hot weather riding tips for horses and human. So why don't you start us off? Yes. Well, this is a, a really very serious situation where both of us live um, because not only do we just have heat, we have humidity and it usually turns hot overnight and I know now that it's quit raining here, that's certainly been the case and already we're starting to see some distress in some of the riders and some of the horses. So the first thing that I like to, to tell my riders and the people in my barn is You've just got to be on top of your hydration, even when you're not at the barn, because that's going to hold you through when you are at the barn. All the time you spend, if you go in the afternoon, all the time you spend in the morning drinking your water is going to help you in the afternoon. You've got to stay on top of that. Similarly, with your horse, top, top requirement for any animal really is fresh, clean water. Hang an extra bucket. Check your your uh, troughs in your field three times a day instead of twice a day, or as often as you need, or get a bigger one. It uh, it's not worth dehydration and and the terrible effects that come with that. You know, because you want to sit inside and don't feel like trudging out to check the waters. It's just not fair. Nope. Um, one thing that I always do, I have an in. Inha- Ugh, an anhydrotic horse, so he does not sweat well. Oh, that's bad news. Yep, it's it's spirit. It's my lesson horse, one of my lesson horses, and usually in the July first of August, he starts to really suffer. Um, so we do things like stay in the shade. We do things like uh, take frequent breaks when he's working when we're doing lessons, and this is going to require. Attention from both the instructor or if you're riding your own horse from yourself. You've got to pay attention to the information the horse is giving you. Notice if he's not sweating. Notice if he can't catch his breath. 
when you have a walk break. Take more walk breaks. If you can't cool down after you've ridden, these are all things to just make note of and file away in your head. I know with spirit, it's not at all uncommon for us to stop the lesson and we get on the wash rack and either liniment or spray down the large muscle. You've got to spray and scrape. If we have a horse that's in any kind of heat distress, um, we'll put one person on the scraper and one person on the hose. And we spray and scrape, and spray and scrape, and spray and scrape. Now explain um, explain why why it's important to do it that way because some folks might think that you just spray them off and that's the end of it. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's certainly what I was taught when I was little. Um, and I don't know if this is, is recent research since I was very young or if, if my instructor just didn't know. Um, water is an insulator. And so you put these this water on this hot horse, and horses are basically boilers. They just create heat all the time. And you leave the water on them. When you get out of the shower, you, you take a towel and you dry off and go on about your life. Well, we don't have a towel for a horse. We have a scraper. And he's generating all this heat, all this heat, all this heat, especially if you come in just from riding or just from working or he can't cool down and you're just going to make him hotter. And then you're going to add fuel to the fire. Things are going to go from bad to worse. So you've got to take the the water off particularly of the large muscle. There you One go. One thing we also do is, uh, uh, it's not uncommon for us to take a bucket of liniment out, you know, mix up some liniment water, some veteran and water, and take it out to a lesson or take it out to a cross-country schooling or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, take a break. Rider needs some water. Splash down the horse a little bit. Sponge him off. Mm-hmm. Or at a clinic, you know, drive out with a somebody's station wagon. I don't know if they make station wagons anymore, or a golf <laughs> cart, or, or whatever. I just dated yeah, myself. Yeah, nowadays it's a golf I? cart. <laughs> yeah, I dated myself, didn't I? Um, and in between the, your ride, have you know the person you went with, or your mother, or your trainer, or whoever, you know, some new friend you've just made at the clinic. You know, get you some water. That's something that I have. Your horse gotten in the habit of doing down here if if I ride during the heat of the day which I do frequently I almost always ride in the middle of the afternoon because that's just what fits in my schedule and here in central Florida that means it's pretty darn toasty and sometimes I get on Beaker and he's already pretty darn warm just because it's 95 degrees outside and I will take uh, a mixture of water and alcohol and sponge down his chest and his legs and sometimes his head before I even go out. Because well, the- you know they make these, um, they have three different things. In fact, uh, two of them I heard about on Stable Scoop and ordered these products. One is the little beanie that you put under your helmet. You leave it in the water. Yeah. And I don't know what's in it. I, I'm not Some a kind of gel stuff. But it makes it, yeah, it makes it cold. And so you wring out the water and then you put it on your head and put your helmet on. They make a horse blanket. It's sort of the opposite of a quarter sheet. It does the, the front part instead of the, the really? back part, really. Huh. Um, and I have one for Emma. And if it's just stupid hot when we're trailering um, or we're at a demo or something or so, and slap it on her, and you can stick your hand under there, and it is appreciably cooler. I can't wear the beanie because my head is too small, and it just doesn't fit me. But I do have it. <laughs> you so the people me- with you need the mini heads, size. this might be an option for them. People with tiny pea heads, it's probably not going to fit you because it's a one-size item. But what they also have that's newer than that is called, I believe, the ice bonnet. And so this is this is for horses that are really seriously in distress. Maybe they've already gone down. I mean, as bad as it's going to get. And you put this ice bonnet on their head, and it's amazing. I believe it's out of Florida, if I am not mistaken. Hmm. Ice bonnet. I'll have to look that up and put a link on the uh, on the show notes page for the tip. Yeah. 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 I think they're still in business. They were brand new and getting started up and looking for distributors and all about two or three years ago. And it's a it's a phenomenal product 
Interesting. So those, those, they make those things for people and horses. So they're, they yeah. are your friend. One of the things that, uh, they are. that I taught Beaker to do when we moved down here, I didn't bother doing it when I was up in Kentucky, but they make this product called horse quencher. Have you heard of it? Oh, well you put it in the water and it, it it's like Kool-Aid makes them to want to drink. Yes. Well, I taught Beaker to drink horse quencher. And yeah. he's he and PT both now have gotten to the point that if I put, just put water with a couple of alfalfa cubes floating in it in the bottom of their feed tub, they go and drink it. Really? Yes. So what I do, oh, again, good to know. before I go riding, I will give Beaker a gallon of horse cruncher. That way I know I'm ahead of the game. I'm not going to wait until he gets yeah. dehydrated. I'm going to make sure, yeah. just like you were talking about at the beginning, um, mm-hmm. Your, your human students, all the water you're drinking mm-hmm. before you come to the barn makes mm-hmm. riding time at the barn better. Well, I'm doing the same thing with the horse. That's I'm awesome. getting him hydrated ahead in advance because he's not a, he's not one of those horses that drinks a ton by himself, and he's not prone to doing yeah. it um, after he rides. I have one like know? that. Yeah, Scooter is the first thing he does after you turn him out is roll in the dirt and then go get a drink of water. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was well worth the time and effort to teach Beaker to oh, drink nice. horse quencher. And you can make ho- homemade horse quencher if you are really? not inclined to buy it. Okay, do you have to order that directly from them, or do they have it at tack and feed stores? Horse quencher is carried at tack and feed stores, but not as many as I would like to see it in. And they do sell it mm-hmm. online. So it, okay. it's easy to find. Just type in horse quencher. Um, cool. It's a fantastic product, and you have to use it according to the label instructions. The big mistake people make is... They pour a serving of it into a gallon of water and think their horse is just going to drink it. And the horse doesn't know what to do. Yeah. You have to put a serving of it in a half an inch of water. And then you add two inches and so that he gets used to what it is. And what hap- the there's little bits of grain in it. And some of the grain floats and some of the grain sinks. And then there's dried molasses and flavoring things in there. Um, so mm-hmm. the water tastes good, like Kool-Aid. But they mm-hmm. get the sensation of grain because as they're sucking up the water, these little tiny bits of, I think they're um, bits of uh, barley, get sucked up mm-hmm. between their lips. They go, oh, crunch, 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 crunch. Oh, I need to drink some oh. more of those grain. And then at the very bottom, oh. there will be a tablespoon or so of oats that sank, which motivates them to get to the bottom of the bucket. Yeah. So it's a very clever product. Oh. And I've not come across a horse yet that doesn't figure it out if you work out a little bit. Wow. Now, have you tasted it? No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm just wondering what it tastes like. It doesn't smell very much because it comes in like apple and butterscotch and I think peppermint. Okay. I honestly cannot smell anything when I open it up. It just okay. It smells like grain to me. Hmm. Maybe I'm just well, not I sensitive. Like it then. Yeah, and my horse speaker does not like peppermints. He does not like really? apples. He does not like butterscotch, but he will drink all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Why be normal? Why be normal? There you go. So uh, there's some handy dandy hot weather riding tips for horse and human brought to you extemporaneously by Michelle Barr. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Michelle. Well, there you have it. Go to horsetipdaily.com, episode 1122 where I, you can find links to products discussed to, for on today's show from various vendors, as well as links to Michelle Barr, our contributor. And don't forget, you can have all of the shows with you wherever you go by downloading the free Horse Radio Network app for Android or iPhone. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. It's free, or you can subscribe via iTunes. This podcast was made possible through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products and listeners like you. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 